favorite part of camp it is everything. I love all of it. There's so much variety and you always have something to look forward to. You get this feeling of independence from being able to do whatever you want and choose the classes you take and moving around by yourself. And at the same time, it's just this feeling of togetherness too. At school, I'm more laid back and kind of calm, but like here I'm really crazy and fun and wacky. I come here every single session because it's too awesome to miss. I've made friendships here, like no other friendships I have, and we only see each other for, you know, the summer months, but still, we get here and we create art, and there's nothing else like it. If there's one specific thing that you like, you can pick a lot of classes that incorporate that, or if you want to try whole new things that you would never get to try anywhere else, you could try all of those also. It's like a buffet. You can't pick what the best part is. In order to enjoy the whole camp experience, you have to have a little bit of each one. At this camp, you can see the world through a different pair of eyes. The Charles River Creative Arts Program was started in 1970 by the Charles River School here in Dover, Massachusetts. Under the direction of Priscilla Dewey and with a six-year grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, it has become a model for hundreds of multi-arts camps throughout the country and around the globe. Every summer, an incredible community of students and staff gather here for two four-week sessions. We offer over 130 courses in the visual arts, theater, music, dance, video and animation, sports, creative writing, computer arts, textiles, and photography, all taught by an outstanding staff of 75 instructors. Here at Charles River, each kid has complete freedom to choose whatever class they want from whatever department, and they create their own day. Charles River lets you pick your own classes, and then if you don't like that class, you can switch into another class. When I first came here when I was eight, and I mean, in between, in those eight years, I've probably taken at least one class from nearly every department. So I mean, I've found things that I really love to do, and I get to do them all day now. Some of the classes can be really small, and a lot of kids actually kind of are drawn to the small classes where they are getting one-on-one -on -one contact with the teachers and it helps build their confidence and it also gives them almost like a private lesson. Other kids are drawn to the huge classes where all their friends are there and it's this big mass of energy. Often what kids are exposed to in terms of art classes, very limited, but when they come here, there's things like installation art and um, mini golf, they create their own golf course, um, and sound sculpture, things that they have never experienced before. I didn't know what animation was, so I wasn't in the class and I went to see what it was, and the teacher of the class, he let me like try it out and stuff, and I now I love animation, I take it every year. I love taking theater, like being in the big camp musical, it's so fun. And I like being in the different band musical ensembles, like I'm in jazz and blues and some of the rock groups. And um, dance classes here are amazing, like from tap to Afro-Brazilian to ballet to hip hop, it's crazy. Here you're in control of your own artistic path, kind of like, it shows itself most in the bands I play in. You know, a lot of the learning is done by ear. It's, it's a really like kind of, organic way of learning. There aren't too many places where you can play, where kids can play rock music in that kind of like educational yet also free setting. One of the great things about the summer program is that there can be a wide age range in some of the classes. You might have nine-year-olds working with 14-year-olds, working with an 18-year-old CIT and a 30-year-old teacher and a 50-year-old teacher, all collaborating making it more like a fun family project than a traditional assignment-driven class. Another great thing is that a lot of the staff here are so multi-talented, even though they're hired in the art department or the dance department or the music department, that's not all they do. Lots of the classes involve more than one discipline. Like um, when we're doing the production, we work with kids that are creating the costumes and the kids that are working on the set sets and creating the props and the children that have created the plays in the, through the playwriting classes. If I'm teaching a band class, I can go right across the hall to a mini show tunes class where a bunch of eight to 10 year olds are learning songs and I can say, hey, why don't you be our backup singers today? And they'll come right in the room, they'll learn the song and we'll perform it later that day. And here the kids are actually able to do that and feel the spontaneity of, 
learning material and performing material, sometimes in the same day. Every day after lunch we have a noontime show. It is a chance for kids to get up individually and sing a song, read poems, do whatever it is that they love to do, and then do it on stage in front of the entire camp. Or classes can show what they've worked on in the past weeks. I'm going to do the new time show tomorrow, and I think I'm going to do like an act with my sister and some of my friends. So I'm pretty excited, but then I'm sort of <coughs> nervous. There's a subtle push to, to get you to show your stuff, but in a very safe way. Everybody respects you, and like, nobody like is like mean to you and stuff. When a kid sees something that they want to do, um, and they see another kid setting that example, there's this automatic thing that goes, I want to do that, how can I do that, I'm going to do that. And it just happens seamlessly here. You can see the other arts going on around you, so someone who thought like, oh, I'm not a dancer, I never want to take a dance class, might see some dance class perform in the noontime show and think, hey, I want to do that. My favorite thing about this camp is definitely the counselors. Everyone here is really into all the kids and all their ideas and never blocks them out and everything like that. The counselors are 100% there because they want to be there. Here, all the counselors are like into it. They, they want to have fun as much as we want to have fun. You know, the people change, but the nature of the collaboration and the generosity of this, the different departments never does change. When I first came here, I was amazed uh, at the number of people on this staff who are professional artists and who make their living or part of their living during the rest of the year doing the very same thing that they teach the kids in the summer. Um, I think that's pretty rare and I think it speaks incredibly well of the camp that so many professional artists would want to arrange their lives so that they could devote the entire summer to being a camp counselor. Growing up primarily in the arts department here, um, all my teachers were like my idols and, and as long, you know, and the more time that I spent with them, the closer we created working bonds and stuff. In addition to the great staff we have here, we have a guest artist program, which is wonderful because the kids get to see artists that are earning their living and spending their lives creating. And sometimes these guest artists really uh, collaborate with the kids as well. These artists aren't just here to perform, but they're also here to talk about their own life experiences. When did they get involved in the, ex in the arts? How hard was it? How difficult was it? What were their challenges growing up? And it's very important for, the, I think, these young people who have dreamed, some of them, to be professional artists, to hear realistically what the struggles can be and what's ahead of them. One thing that I think is wonderful about the camp is that it really does focus a lot on the process, the process of making art, the process of finding your creative voice. Um, but then at the very end, even though it's so much about process, you do have festival day where you get to present everything that you've done to your parents and your family and your friends and it all comes together so it's almost like you've got something that you're really working towards. Festival Day happens at the end of every session and it transforms Dover. It's open to the public and it's just really alive. Um, there are bands performing all day and acting performances and uh, video screenings and art that's put up and Aikido demonstrations and gymnastics. We have artwork displayed everywhere from the rafters to the top of the cubbies and all the walls are covered. I'm in two sewing classes, Retro Fashion Refit and Creative Clothing, and they have a fashion show for all of those people that do that. It's truly moving to see this entire camp transformed in base, into basically one live gallery. Everything from musical instrument making to comic books are on display. It's very satisfying to say, hey, you know, four weeks, we did that. It's been almost 40 years now, and CRCAP continues to be a place where artists of all ages gather to form a creative community and develop their own individual artistic voices. It really got me into performing with other kids. Like, you know, as soon as I perform here, you know, now I perform during the year with all my other friends, and it's because of here. I really want to do something uh, sort of creative when I grow up, and I've this camp sort of has open possibilities for me. I think here is really where I found my individuality and I was really able to be and explore myself without criticism. And I also found my love for things that I know I want to do for the rest of my life. 
I like this camp. I'm glad I went here. Charles River Rocks! <laughs>